We must all get ready now. So I say, it's not Frankenstein, you moron. It's Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> oh, by Cromlin, you sure showed him. I recently came across an animated pilot called Welcome to Eltingville. Produced for Adult Swim in the early 2000s, the cartoon follows four nerdy teens and their petty, reference-filled escapades. I had never heard of this one before, so after watching the pilot, I did a little digging about the creators, looking for behind-the-scenes info and such, and I found out it was based on a comic book series. So I got a hold of the comics, read them, and I gotta say, it's a shame these didn't get picked up. The overarching theme of the comic addresses toxic fandom and entitled fans, and despite the last few issues being more recent, most of them were pretty ahead of their time in lampooning the issues arising out of these circles. And yes, while the term toxic is kinda cringe, I think it's the best way to describe this bunch. The Eltingville Club is a series of comics created by Evan Dorkin, great last name by the way, uh, surrounding these geeky teenagers, Bill Dickey, Peter Denunzio, Joshua Levy, and Jerome Stokes. You get to know these four as they engage in the shittier aspects of fandom, from staying up for 32 hours straight to watch a Twilight Zone marathon, to sneaking into theaters to watch a movie they know they'll hate. I'm under the impression people wouldn't do some of these things, uh, the characters are exaggerated for a comedic effect, although the way they are characterized is real. They're constantly rude and belligerent to each other, they grandstand over extensive trivia knowledge and their collections of merchandise. Arguing so violently over the most innocuous things, you get the sense they don't even like being around each other. But this strange, almost religious code they follow keeps them together. For them, being a fan is like being in the line of duty. It's a rough road of tough decisions, scrounging and scraping to get the latest releases of merch and comics, as well as the rarer pieces of merch from yesteryear. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. It's hilarious how similar these guys sound to certain groups on Twitter, especially in a post-sequel trilogy environment. In many ways, these characters are a warped mirror of the online needs and shut-ins of today. These types of people have only increased since the rise of online content, comic book culture becoming mainstream, and gaming becoming the most lucrative form of entertainment worldwide. It makes me wish the pilot had gotten picked up. There was just so much it could have commented on, it just came out too early. Dorkin had a lot of creative control over the pilot, but in terms of language and behavior, it's a lot tamer. It was produced in the early 2000s, so dropping slurs and f-bombs weren't going to happen like in the comics. The humor does suffer a bit as a result. A very interesting distinction is, as the comic goes on, Josh is shown to be the most hated member of the group. He is seemingly the most unlikable, he's desperate, he's stupid, he's in denial, and he's fat. The best example of his desperation and stupidity is when he finds out that Bill has obtained the last card needed to fill out his collection, which can only be found in packs of Wonder Bread. Once Bill refuses to give it to him, Josh decides to go to the supermarket and just tear open bags of Wonder Bread to find the card. And of course, he gets caught. Your sympathy will be geared towards him in the beginning a lot more simply from how hostile the rest of the group is towards him. In the pilot episode, however, he's not sympathetic at all. Again, Josh was the most active character from the beginning, but because of the overall personalities of the three boys being turned down, it makes them seem more level-headed. Especially Bill Dickey. Bill is the leader of the Eltonville Club. He calls the meetings to order, he rallies the group after an epic defeat, not well I might add. He's without a doubt the most devoted to being a fan. He treats it as if it's a way of life. He tends to verbally abuse a lot of them, especially Josh. The arguments normally between him and Josh tend to escalate to the point of putting the fate of the group in jeopardy at the end of nearly every issue. Towards the end of the series, his behavior becomes so unruly, the group disbands entirely. I'd say the comic starts out funny, some of the behavior is so pathetic I couldn't help but chuckle a bit. I'd say towards the end, things start getting kind of uncomfortable. Bill's mom pays two former nerds to put him through some kind of a nerd conversion therapy. They keep him tied up in the basement, and they don't feed him until he agrees to start throwing away merchandise. And of course, Bill, being the way he is, doesn't cooperate at all. It begins to border on torture and escalates to a point that Bill literally vomits all over them. 
While watching the 32-hour Twilight Zone marathon, the boys consume loads of caffeinated junk food to stay up, which eventually wears off. They raid Josh's medicine cabinet to stay awake, using an assortment of pills, which backfires entirely. They start hallucinating. They <laughs> destroy Josh's living room, and Jerry vomits all over the- Damn, what's up with all the vomiting? Jesus. The darkest and by far craziest this series gets is in the This Fan, This Monster issue. Bill gets a job at their local comic book shop, his boss leaves him in charge, and because Bill is a psycho, this small amount of power goes to his head. And he really tears into his friends too, I mean he, I mean he annihilates them, and in response they beat the shit out of him. Bill then attempts to light the entire store on fire with all the customers and the owner inside. If you feel these comics were made with some kind of fury and resentment towards this side of fandom, you're right. Back in the day, before social media, fans voiced their displeasure by sending letters to the publishers. If they were really unhappy or unhinged, they sent hate mail. I never got much in the way of hate mail. Small press readers don't seem to get worked up quite the same way as the mainstream fans do. The Marvel and DC Comics fans who get nutty enough to call for creators dismissal or even death over the way they wrote a fictional character in a comic book? That's what happened back in 1994 to my then publisher Dan Vado. He was writing for DC Comics and received a shitstorm of hate mail from DC fans after he killed the character in the Justice League named Ice. He read some of the mail he was getting from angry fans. It was ugly, nasty stuff, name calling, death threats, rants, screeds, hate mail over a fictional character. The comic was created because of crazy fans attacking somebody Dorkin knew. Eltingville was about the shitty fans who treated other fans like shit, treated professionals like shit, and acted as if they owned the characters and properties they were supposedly such great fans of. Endlessly irritated, incredibly obnoxious, masters of trivia no one else gives a shit about, members of a special club of know-it-all nimrods who bitched about why so many people disregarded fandom as silly, stupid, and immature all while doing everything they could to make fandom look silly, stupid, and immature. And these types of fans have only grown in numbers since the series inception, and while critiquing popular media is very important and a lot more popular now because of sites like YouTube, and many would agree that the quality of modern entertainment is lacking in some areas, there are other aspects that are exponentially better than they were. Toxic fans have been around since Gene Deitch got hate mail for those awful Tom and Jerry cartoons. They were there in the 90s harassing members of the Tiny Toons staff. And they'll be there in the future for whatever poorly remade crap Disney decides to push out. But I think it's important not to delude ourselves into becoming a violent or a hysterical over things that are meant to entertain and bring joy to millions. The next time someone makes a casting decision you disagree with, or a Spider-Man fan says that he likes Miles Morales better than Peter, Maybe don't go on a psychotic rant over it. And uh, touch some fucking grass. You gave me until Monday. Saturday. Tomorrow. Uh oh. Looks like that's all the time we have for this video. But oh, hey. Hey. Things could be worse. There's no need to fear. 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 Underdog is here. No, 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 no. no. The truth is, there are videos you can watch on the channel right now. So if you're looking for some smart content, something compelling, and something different, then subscribe to 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 J J J Zero.